my template is very similar to this website. So after you download it, it should look something like this. And so what we'll be modifying is basically just the index HTML. And what this is, is that it's just the code that says like, what does this page have? So if I open it with just Google Chrome, we can see that this is the template that you'll receive. So currently I have everything as placeholder information. So first name, last name, and then these links just go to Facebook, GitHub, and LinkedIn without any like user ID URL. So it's the same four parts, the about me. Then here it'll have your projects and you can put in whatever you like. I just put my videos here as placeholders. And in this case, you would put in your own resume. I'll teach you how to do that later. And lastly, you'll have your contact information that you'll have to input yourself. So how do we edit this template and how do we upload it so that it'll be live on your own GitHub website? We'll have to open this HTML file with some text editor. So in this case, I'll just be opening it with Sublime. All this code is just saying like what should be on the page. For example, in my about me part where I just put in like saying thanks and all that. Let's just say my name's like LeBron James. Like, hi, I'm LeBron James, NBA player for the Lakers. If we save this and we reload the HTML file on Google Chrome, we can see that now I've updated my about me. So if we go through the entire website, starting from up to down, so we start at the top, we can ignore these things, but I have everything commented out saying we have our header and our sliders and our page layout. So for the page layout, we see that this part's the about, so that would be the about tab right here. And if you go down, I think I commented also for skills or in this case it would be projects. So we can go here. So anything you modify between skills and the end of skills. So here would pop up in that tab. The third tab would be the resume as we can see here. And lastly, the fourth tab would be contact which we can find with this comment right here. So the contact and it would end here. So let's just say I'm building this website for myself using my template, so let's just start from scratch. The first thing I want to do is, if we look here, I want to change my first name, my last name, where I go to school, and all my links. Basically just look for white text because that's the placeholder information. So I'm just going to change it to Edward Saw. And then so after that, if I press save, <clears throat> I see that the page has been updated now. So I have my name, I have a quick bio of who I am. And so like for these icons, I want to have it so the links go to me. As we can see here, these are all my social links. So instead of facebook.com by itself, I'll just fill in with my actual Facebook account. So in my GitHub, and then my LinkedIn. So if I save that, we can go back to the page. And you can always like, if you think it's not going to work, just refresh the page and and make sure that your changes actually did what you wanted to do. If it doesn't work, just Command Z, cancel it out. So I just changed my GitHub link. So if I click this, now it goes to my GitHub link. So I finished the top part. So I have all my links correct. And now I want to do my About Me. So once again, all you have to do is go to the About Me section that I have commented. So the end about and about would just be here. So hi, I'm Edward. I'll just fill in this information really quick. Okay, save it and refresh this page. Now I have this. So the next part will be projects. And in my case, I just left the videos in the template, which you can see here, they're gonna be called iframes. And all you have to do in the iframes, so let's just say you make YouTube videos too. If you wanna have your videos in, just click these iframes and just replace the sources URL to the YouTube URL link of your own video. But what else you can do is that you can actually just create small tabs for each product you've done. I've seen on a lot of websites where you can just have your icon of your project, and if a user clicks on that icon, it'll open up a small screen giving a brief description of what you did for that project, like technologies you used, what you accomplished, things like that. So that's really up to you. So for the third tab, it's going to be resume. So we can see here that I made a resume.pdf file, but it's just going to be an empty resume for a placeholder. If you want to put your actual resume, all you have to do is replace this resume PDF file with your own resume, rename it to whatever you want, and then in this resume section right here, what I did was I just said last updated because maybe a recruiter or something like that wants to see when was this person's resume last updated. Maybe he forgot to update his, but this newest like summer job or something like that. All you have to do is just go to the source. So it'll be on this line. And all you have to do is just rename it to, so if you, let's say you call the new resume instead of just resume.pdf. All you have to do is replace it with new resume.pdf and you'll be done. But I am not doing that, so I'll just leave it back to that. So finally, the last part is just the contact information section. So. If we go down here, we can see that this is the section. It's going to be three parts. So I just put location, phone number, and email, but you can change it to anything you want. So let's just say instead of email, maybe I just do a uh, YouTube channel. If I change that and refresh the page, 
So as you can see, it's mainly just editing out the white text to being whatever you want it to be. So now it says YouTube channel instead of email, but I'll just change it back. If you do use email, we can see here that if someone clicks on it, like I said before, it'll just be able to send an email directly. So you can just input your own email here instead. So for me, I'll just do my school email and just make sure to change the white text so that people know who they're emailing to. And I'll just change my location to Berkeley. Cool. If you do that and save, I can see now that the website has been more customized for me. So my name, who I am, my links, Facebook, GitHub, LinkedIn. And if you want, you can find other icons for other social media platforms like maybe Instagram or something like that. Just replace the icon and just change the link to be Instagram instead. So then here I have a brief summary about myself. Projects, I just left my videos here, but you can put in your own like coding projects or things like that. Now the resume works too, so if you click it, it'll display whatever file you have as your resume inside. And then lastly, my contact information has Berkeley, my phone number, and then if I click the email address, it'll have an email ready to be sent immediately. The last part before we start deploying onto GitHub is that if you want to change the background image, I just put a Red Dead Redemption 2 image because that's what I've been playing a lot recently. I think on my actual website, if I can find it really quick, to make sure the image is 1920 by 1080, and you can, you can just replace it with whatever you want. So for me, I use this picture. And so you go to your image folder, and then so as we can see here, it says background.jpg here. So I'm just gonna delete this one and rename this to background. And save. And if I refresh the page, now I have my original background from my actual website. So you can change it to whatever you want. Just make sure it's the right dimensions. Once again, 1920 by 1080. All right, cool. So now we have our website locally set up. So what that means is that on our computer, we can open up our website, but no one else can. So we actually need to have it uploaded on a certain website to host it. And in this case, we'll be using GitHub because it's for free. So first, create an account really quick. You just need an email to set it up. So in my case, it's called edward-saw-example. But a really important thing to note is that whatever you use as your username, it'll be the same name as your website. And it'll just be ending with .github.io. So we want to create a new repository. So we first need to verify our email. So let me just do that really quick. Mother f Okay, so now our email is verified. So I want to create my own repository as I said before. And we need to make sure that our repo matches exactly the name of our um, username. So I want to be calling it edward saw example and make sure to add github.io. So once again, make sure the first part of the website's name matches the name of your username and just use .github.io after. And then for description, it's optional, I'll just say personal website example. So how it works is that for Git, there's two sides. There's gonna be a remote repository and there's gonna be a local repository. What the remote repository is what GitHub, the website itself has. So whatever you upload onto GitHub will be in the remote and what's in the local repository is what is on your laptop. So what we wanna do is put our local files onto the remote repository so that once someone goes on edward-saw.example.github.io, they see the website that we have locally too. First wanna to do is that we want to clone this remote repository in our local. I wanna clone the repository really quick. What you wanna do is git clone and then just copy that link there. And we have cloned an empty repository because once again, on the remote we have nothing and we wanna add all of our local files onto that remote. Now we have the repository. So if I list the files in my current directory, we can see that there's gonna be edward-saw.example.github.io. So we wanna go into that directory, so cd into it. And now we're in this, but there's nothing inside of it. So we have to put in all of our local files into it. If we go back here, we can see that this is the demo website that we've modified. So just to double check, let's open it up again in Chrome. It's Edward Saw, has all my stuff that I just edited. And also just really quickly too, as we can see here on Chrome, each website tab has like its own title. So here it says your name, personal website. To quickly change that, just go up to your header. It'll be called title. And let's just say it's Edward Saw personal website. Save that, and if we refresh, we can see that now on the top of the tab, it says Edward Saw personal website. We wanna move all these files from the demo website folder onto the edward dot, the edward saw dot example GitHub bio. I should have used another name. So I wanna copy all of these files, and then let's go to the edward saw dot example GitHub bio and paste. Cool, so now we have all of our local files onto the GitHub 
repository that we want to push onto the remote. And one important thing to note is that if you're going to be using your own like HTML file where you'll be editing code while building your own website, if you're deploying it onto GitHub, make sure it's named index.html because that's the file GitHub will be using to launch your website with. Now we need to push all of our local files onto the remote repository. So I'm going to do git add dash all. And we can see if I do git status, we can see that we've added all the files for our website onto the repository. It's a lot of stuff, but don't worry, that's why I use a template, right? So now we want to commit the files. So I'll just say first commit. So we add everything onto the committing stage. And now all I have to do is push. And what push does is that it sees all the changes you've made that you, for your commit, and now it pushes all these changes onto the remote repository. So now our website will be hosted live on GitHub. So you might have one problem like me where you have multiple GitHub accounts. So if you do, just make sure you go to your keychain access on Mac and just delete the save passwords you have from before. Because otherwise GitHub will be using the account you already had before. So if you're starting fresh and you didn't have a GitHub account like before, as in my terminal you'll see, we have to enter in our username and password for GitHub. So I'll just put that in really quick. So edward.example. And my password is, I think this. Cool, and now we're pushing our website live. So now we're done. So I just found out one problem with GitHub. So we actually have to make two commits to see the page live or else it'll take a really long time to load. So all I did was just, I went back here and just changed the title of the website. So I'll just call it just example personal website. And if we go back to our terminal, I'll just add all of our changes. So we can see that there's one modification. Just commit another commit. And then we push onto our live website. We wait really quick. All right, cool. So now if we go on our repo, we can see all the commits and I just figured out with the second commit, that's why we have three. But basically if you change it now, you can see your website live immediately. So if I copy this link, there we go. We can now see that our website is live. So it's called Edward Saw Example Personal Website. It has the pictures that I put, the videos work too, I can play it. Well, like if you want to use a video, you can put in your own products. And then we have our <coughs> information, we have our resume. If I click it, it'll open up the template resume that I have that you'll replace. And yeah. And then if we click email, it's just like the one you have locally that we made. It's just that we now push it up onto an actual website to be hosted on. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, if you follow the steps, you should be able to make your own personal website in about like 10 to 12 minutes. And before the video ends, I just want to give a quick shout out to BenQ for sponsoring today's video. So BenQ sent me over their screen bar plus e-reading lamp. And so what this is, is that it's a lamp that you can attach onto any monitor and it has a light sensor on it so that it can adjust accordingly to the current light levels of your surrounding. If you're interested, there will be links down below where you can purchase this product and you can find it on Amazon or BenQ's website itself. And let me show you really quickly how this product works. So I just finished setting up the lamp right here. Literally all you have to do is unbox the package, set up the lamp right here, Clamp it onto your monitor right here and just connect the USB to any USB port and you're ready to go. We have the light attached to my monitor and all you have to do is just clamp it on like this. And you just grab this USB, connect it to anything. I'm just going to connect it to my Mac right here. And so now they give you this dial where there's basically three buttons. So this button turns on the lamp. So if I press this, the light turns on. So I can turn it off like that. Pretty easy. So I just turned off the light in my room and now I just have my lamp on. So if we can see here, as I said before, this is a turn it on and off, but here we can switch between two modes. So this mode is for the color of the light and for this mode is just the brightness of the light. So currently I'm on brightness and what you have to do is all you have to do is rotate it and you can turn on the brightness or you can turn down the brightness. Now I guess you can just see over here like my paper right there. And when it's on full blast, you can see the paper. If I tone it down, you can't see it. And so if I switch to the other mode, you can change the light from either being yellow or white. So if we click this, I can set it from either white to more orange. And that just depends on your preference. So I'll just switch it back to white. And finally, there's this button here, which is the auto adjustment sensor. Because this desktop lamp is actually really nice. It has a light sensor that can tell the current light level of your environment. So if I click this, we can see that this lights up, which means that currently auto sensor is on. So as we can see here, the light has adjusted to how bright it should be according to the current environment I'm in. And as you can see, even with my camera, basically my entire apartment is lit up even though I don't have any lights on except for this and my monitors.